Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da. Habita filah, continue on in our study of rulings of fasting according to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. We reach the point in which it becomes important to talk about some of the conditions for the acceptance of fasting. One of the conditions which I think we all know is uh, being a Muslim, first and foremost. So fasting is not accepted from a disbeliever. And although many people may have pe uh, friends and family who want to fast along with them who are non-Muslims, and no one can prohibit them from that, and they gain maybe a, a, a physical benefit. They gain physical benefits of fasting, but they do not gain reward from Allah until they accept Islam. Uh, the second condition for fasting, and this is with all ibadah, is uh, al-aql, is having the intellectual capacity. So fasting is not accepted from someone who is insane, someone who is uh, mentally impaired to a certain degree. Uh, which they are unaware of what they're doing and so on and so forth where they're not held accountable uh, And the third condition is of course having the intention and especially this is important during the holy month of Ramadan that you must make intention every night uh, Before you fast every night. So tomorrow now you have intention for to fast tomorrow Okay, and that intention is not something you use uh, uh, that you utter by your tongue. You don't have to say to yourself, I'm fasting tomorrow, or say to anyone else. But it, rather the intention, al-qalb, that the place of the intention is the heart. Uh, and the fourth condition is the absence of any obstacle uh, for fasting. For example, for women, an obstacle for women, of course, is if they uh, are on their menses, you know, they have hide, or they have nifas, which, which is the postpartum bleeding, you know, after childbirth. So these things are prohibitors. They're mu'ana, mu'ana asom, uh, or mu'ana asiyam. They are uh, prohibitors of fasting. And then the fifth condition is to have uh, knowledge of the time from the call to Fajr until sunset and all of this is evidenced through the hadith of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which he said Rufiya uh, al-qalam an thalatha an al-na'im hatta yistaykad wa an al-sabi hatta yahtalim wa an al-majnoon hatta uh, in this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said The pen is lifted from three A person who is sleeping until he awakes A boy till he reaches puberty Or meaning someone who reaches Until they reach puberty And a person who is mentally uh, Impaired or insane Till they become rational Okay And this is an authentic hadith And the Prophet Sallallahu said, whoever does not make the intention to fast before Fajr, there is no fast for him. So this is talking about the uh, obligatory fast like Ramadan, that you must have the intention, make the intention the night before. Uh, also, the Prophet والسلام, said, when night falls from, the so uh, from this side, the day vanishes from this side and the sun sets then the fasting person should break his fast. So this is the last, uh, related to the last uh, condition that we mentioned, that knowing the time of fasting. And it is obligatory to begin fasting the month of Ramadan as soon as the new crescent is cited by one honest Muslim. So, so someone who is honest and trustworthy and it was reported on the authority of Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma that he said the people saw the new moon and I informed the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that I had seen it. 
upon which he fasted and ordered the people to fast. This is an authentic hadith. So letting us know that if one person sees the crescent moon, the the uh, you know the sign that it's a new month, then this is letting us know that uh, then that's sufficient. Their testimony is sufficient, or their witness that uh, the month or the month is starting. Uh, also, if this is not seen, meaning if they if no one sees it, for example, the the, the sky is cloudy or whatever, and no one no one sees the crescent moon, uh, it is obligatory to begin fasting the month of Ramadan when 30 days of Shaban have passed. So after 30 days of Shaban, there's no 31st of Shaban. The 30th day after it's passed, then the next day is Ramadan. It's reported in the authority of Abu Huraira, radiallahu ta'ala, that he said the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, uh, said, uh, fast when you see it, meaning the new crescent, and end your fast when you see it. And if the sky is overcast, then complete the month of Sha'ban as 30, meaning 30 days. This is an authentic hadith. Uh, I think now it becomes important for us to know about some of the things which invalidate a person's fasting, the things that break your fast. Uh, fasting is invalidated by eating or drinking intentionally, and there is no difference of opinion on this point. As for eating and drinking due to forgetfulness, it does not invalidate the fast based upon the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala who reported from the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, if a person forgets and eats or drinks, he should complete his fast because it was Allah who fed him and gave him drink. So if you forget, you're cooking, for example, and you taste, or you you just forget completely and you drink some water because you're thirsty and you're not, you're not thinking. And then you realize after you've taken a sip or something that you are fasting. Just continue fasting. And there's no sin on you because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as a messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi Wasallam mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is the one who fed you and gave you dr drink. So that's very important. So if you do that by mistake, not intentionally, then you're ma'bur, you're excused. Uh, fasting is invalidated by intentionally having Allah, sexual intercourse, and there is no difference of opinion on this point based on the hadith of Abu Huraira, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who said, while we were sitting with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a man came and said, O Messenger of Allah, I am ruined. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked what the matter with him was. He replied, I had sexual relations with my wife while I was fasting. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him, Can you afford to manumit a slave? He replied in the negative. He said, No. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him, Can you fast for two consecutive months? Meaning back to back. Uh, like it's like doing Ramadan twice, two consecutive months. Uh, he replied in the negative. The Prophet والسلام, asked him, Can you afford to feed 64 persons? He replied in the negative. The Prophet والسلام, kept silent. And while we were in that state, a big basket full of dates was brought to the Prophet. He asked, Where's the questioner? He replied, I am here. The Prophet والسلام, said, Take this basket and give it in charity. The man said, Should I give it to a person poorer than I? By Allah, there is no family between its two mountains, meaning Medina, poorer than me. The Prophet ﷺ smiled till his premolar teeth became visible and then said, Feed your family with it. This is an authentic hadith. So that's a beautiful hadith of the Messenger of Allah wasallam. but it shows us the tartib or the order in which one must make kafara or expiation if they had if they had relations uh, during the while they're fasting in Ramadan, that they must uh, do that. Also, in this hadith, there's there's so many immense benefits, and we don't want to get off target. But just seeing the beauty of listening, you know, this man was so poor, and the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he smiled. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is Sadaqah and which shows us the beauty of Islam. And when he smiled, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you saw his, his, uh, his molar teeth, his premolar teeth. 
in order to see your premolar teeth, that means you're either laughing or you're very, you know, that's very difficult to see. So that's a sign that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was lighthearted and that, uh, you know, it shows the, the mercy of Islam. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then said, feed your family with it. You know, give this to your family. Uh, <clears throat> fasting is invalidated by intentionally vomiting. When you throw up, uh, according to the hadith of Abu Huraira, radiallahu ta'ala, who said the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if anyone was afflicted with vomiting while he was fasting, he does not have to make up for it. But if he induced the vomiting, he must make up for it. So if you throw up intentionally, for whatever reason, uh, then this breaks your fast. But if you throw up, okay, and you, you didn't intend, you got sick, it doesn't invalidate your fast. Uh, another point, it is forbidden to fast without interruption according to the hadith of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and this is about uh, Wisal. Uh, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam uh, prohibited uh, continuous fasting out of compassion for them. They said, but you fast continuously. He وسلم, said, my situation is not like yours. I am fed and given to drink by my Lord. This means, you know, when you don't break your fast. Okay, and you fast continuously. And this is something which is disliked. Uh, another important invalidator is the secretion of al-mini, which invalidates fasting. This is because it is ordinarily accomplished by feelings of desires and ejaculation, whether the secretion was caused by the wife's caressing or by masturbation or by thinking of sexual matters and looking at some object of desire. So if someone is doing something and al-mini, al-mini is, uh, is, uh, is, is basically sperm or that which comes out, sexual discharge. Uh, and this this will uh, you know break your your fast, especially if it was done uh, with shahwa. You, you know, for example, looking at the muharram or even the halal. You know, if, if a husband and a wife or whatever the case may be, and this happens to the husband or the wife, then this is this breaks their fast. So that's why everyone should be careful, of course, when they're fasting. Uh, this does not include, for example, someone who is sleeping and they have what's called a wet dream. Okay? They wake up and they find moisture. Akramakum Allah. This does not invalidate your fasting. Okay? So in this situation, make a ghusl and uh, continue fasting. It's reported uh, in another... Uh, in a hadith, we already mentioned this hadith. Every uh, uh, the and this is a hadith of Qudsi, and it's attributed to Allah Azza wa Jal. Every action of the son of Adam is for him, and the reward of good deeds is multiplied from ten to seven hundred times. Allah says, except for fasting, that is for me, and I shall reward it. He leaves food for my sake. He leaves drink for my sake. He leaves his pleasure for my sake, and he leaves his wife for my sake. Verily, the fragrance from the mouth of a fasting person is sweeter in Allah's sight than the scent of musk. The fasting person will be happy on two occasions, once when he breaks his fast and once when he meets his Lord. In that hadith we, we went over. And the shahid, the point of mention in that hadith is that giving up the shahwa. So that's why it's important to be careful when a person is fasting that... Uh, that... Uh, to be cautious with regards to uh, those those things which could potentially break the fast. And the Prophet, it was reported on the authority of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala that she said the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to kiss his wife while he was fasting and he would caress her while he was fasting. But he was the strongest of you in controlling his desires. This is an authentic hadith. In another version, she said, and which of you is better control over his desire than the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had? This is an authentic narration. Letting us know those things are permissible, but it's better to avoid them if a person knows that they are not strong and just to avoid to what's called sadda dhariya, you know, cutting off the bab to keep from falling into that which is muharram, meaning breaking one's fast, 
during the holy month of Ramadan. So it's very important to be very careful. And of course, those things uh, are for uh, the married married people. Uh, Some of the things that are recommended with regards to uh, fasting, uh, one of the things it is recommended in breaking the fast, uh, to hasten to break in the fast, uh, according to the hadith of Sahil ibn Sa'id, who said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, La yazal al-nas bi khayr ma ajilu al fitr The people will remain on the right path as long as they hasten to break their fast. So that is one of the things. That's from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Don't delay. Try to break your fast. As soon as you hear the Adhan, it comes in. Then, uh, you know, eat your date or, or what have you. Hasten to break your fast. Uh, likewise, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to break his fast before praying. And I think that's something that's widespread and known. Uh, even if it's with water or dates or whatever or what have you. Uh, it is also recommended to delay the suhoor so that one finishes eating and drinking a short while before Fajr time. So suhoor is good to be close to the time uh, when the Fajr uh, comes in. Of course you finish suhoor before then, but, it, but being closer to that time instead of getting up an hour before uh, Fajr, or the, the, the time for Fajr coming in and having suhoor, this is, this is good, this is khair, khair adhim. But the closer that you are to the time, the better, the closer, uh, more in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Some of the, if a person misses If a, if a person um, makes up some of the things that a person needs to do while making up for uh, fasting. First, it is op an obligation upon a person who breaks his fast due to some lawful reason, such as traveling, illness, and menses, to make up for it. So you must make up your fast. That if you, for example, as women, if you have your menses during Ramadan, the last Ramadan, you should make up the days that you miss. If it's seven days, if it's five days, whatever it is. You should make that up before the next Ramadan. Uh, and also, another important point is breaking the fast is permissible. It's a ruksa for the traveler. So someone who's traveling, they can break their fast. Uh, the Prophet uh, in the hadith of Hamza ibn Amr al-Aslami said to the Prophet should I fast when I'm traveling? The Prophet replied, if you wish, you may fast. If you wish, you may break your fast. This is an authentic hadith. Uh, if the traveling warrior, meaning the mujahid, fears that he will be afflicted by injury or weakness, which should affect his ability to fight, then breaking the fast is strongly recommended. Uh, and this is in accordance with the hadith of the Prophet wasallam, in which he said, you are nearing, nearing your enemy and breaking the fast would give, your, give you greater strength. So this is for the case of the Mujahid. Uh, it is not obligatory to make up the missed days of Ramadan immediately. On the contrary, it is necessary to be relaxed about it. And uh, it is reported in the authority of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha that she said, not relaxes and careless, but meaning you don't have to make it up right there immediately in Shawal, which is the month after Ramadan. And it's good to strive to get those six days of Shawal. Uh, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha that she said I used to have fasting days owing from Ramadan and I could not make them up until Sha'ban this is an authentic hadith uh, Half of Ibn Hajar said in Fath al-Bari in the hadith there is evidence of an open uh, ruqsa or excuse to delay making up the missed days of Ramadan whether there is an excuse or not but likewise you don't want to be careless and miss uh, those times uh, also, another important uh, point is the permissibility of observing voluntary fast for those who have, an who have obligatory days 
to make up. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we can have in Kareem, so whoever of you cites, uh, meaning the cites the crescent moon, the month uh, of Ramadan, he must observe fasting that month. And whoever is ill or on a journey, the same number of days which one did not observe fast from other days. In this verse, there is evidence that the time for making up for missed days in Ramadan is liberal. So if a Muslim owes anything of the fast on Ramadan to occupy himself with voluntary fast, such as fasting the day of Arafah, fasting Ashura, or fasting the days of al bayth it is apparent that it is permissible for him to do so. Uh, this is the view of the Hanafis and the Shafi'is, and is one opinion reported from Imam Ahmed. Another last, uh, another important point, if a person dies owing fasting days, his, ex his, his, uh, the people who are responsible for his estate, meaning his family members, his next of kin, must make uh, them up for him. It's reported in the authority of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if anyone died owing fasting days, his executor must make them up uh, for him. And a last point, an elderly person who is unable to fast or to make up for missing days should atone for each lost day by feeding a poor person. It was uh, reported on the authority of Apa that he heard Abdullah ibn Abbas uh, reciting. And as for those who can fast with difficulty, they have to feed a miskeen uh, for every day in Surah Al-Baqarah. Ibn Abbas who commented, it is not abrogated. It refers to the old man and the old woman who cannot fast. They can feed a poor person for each day. They do not fast. This is an authentic hadith. And those are just some of the benefits. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.